Hi, I'm John Smith with PDI Engineering, and today I'm going to talk about the set-top box interface module. Today I'm going to talk about PDI's satellite interface, how it's wired into the head end. There are lots of different ways uh, that it can be uh, integrated into your head end system, um, and it can even be used discreetly um, not in a head end. Uh, so I'll get into all the different scenarios of how a satellite interface can be used in your system and how it's wired in. The D12 is used commonly because it's economical and that it has an amplified RF output that can be home run to the television. So I want to talk about how the, the, the most simple form of uh, wiring at the head end will show the equipment here on the table just so you can see it. This is the 772, the PDI 772HE. 10 tap power supply so for every 10 um, arm mounted televisions you'll have one of these in the head end and then this is the satellite interface you'll have one of these for each television and this is, forms the bridge between the television and the receiver box the wiring uh, becomes pretty straightforward uh, the data path coming from the receiver on with direct tv it's a usb cable standard usb plugs into the back of the interface module, which is a standard mini-mod form factor, fits into any uh, mini-mod rack that you can buy from any of the typical vendors. Then uh, you've got the data between the, the uh, DirecTV and the interface. To get to the interface to the television, you'll run standard CAT5, CAT5E, or CAT6 from your head end to each television along with the coaxial cable. So this represents the cable coming from the television. It plugs into the RJ45 port on the back of the receiver. There's only one other port and that's for service. So it's very obvious um, how to make the connection. The receiver box then would have the uh, satellite signal coming in from the multi-switch here. It would then have the single uh, coaxial cable coming from its RF output, um, which is going to be set to either channel 3 or 4 with this switch down here. Then coming into the 772HE IND, this is the individual version, you'll see there's 10 individual inputs and 10 individual outputs. So in this example, I've routed into the first input from the receiver, and then this white cable here shows um, the cable that would ultimately uh, go all the way back to the television that this, that this CAT5 cable goes to and that ultimately will control this receiver box. So I just described the basic setup for a satellite interface uh, which allows the patient full access to all of the satellite channels. If your facility has additional in-house channels that may consist of a DVD player or multiple DVD players, a rooftop antenna, uh, or a, a computer system, or any other sort of video source. That's easily integrated in, into the system. The way that works, uh, this DVD player here represents your in-house channel, your in-house DVD player. This particular DVD player has an RF output. If you have a DVD player that does not have an RF output, you would run that through a modulator. If you had additional channels, you'd combine those, and ultimately you'd get to a um, output of uh, all of the, the uh, combined in-house channels that would then uh, feed an amplifier with enough amplification to distribute to each television in the facility. So for example, uh, if there were eight televisions in the facility, then you would uh, run the output of the amplifier to an eight-way splitter, then each output of the splitter would go to an individual receiver as is shown here to the RF input of the individual receiver. This works great for receivers that have RF uh, outputs because they will always have a, an off-air input or an over-the-air input or an antenna input. It's all uh, can be called different things. In the case where you've used a receiver um, with an HDMI output and the HDMI is going out to each television uh, there is no RF output here. There's also not going to be an RF input. Uh, in that case, each output from the splitter for your in-house channels would still go into a 772HEIND, such as this. Each output would go to each uh, arm-mounted television. In that case, each television now has the CAT5 
for the control, has an HDMI for the video, and then there would also be a coaxial cable that would deliver power to, if it's an R-mounted television, um, it would deliver power and also the in-house channels. The standard PDI 772HE contains a built-in splitter and can be used to simplify the distribution of the in-house channels by replacing the 772HEIND and by eliminating the splitter shown here and associated cables. For TVs not powered over the coax cable, we remove the coax power supply from the installation as shown here. In this situation, the set-top box and interface can be located in the head end wiring closet or right next to the TV. In addition to the PD295001 set-top box interface, which is designed specifically for direct TV set-top boxes, we also offer the PD295002, the infrared version that is designed to be a universal interface for any other type of set-top box. Because it uses an infrared output, it can be designed to imitate any set-top box's infrared remote control and therefore can control um, anyone's box. I have here the 295002. As you can see from the front, uh, it looks identical to the DirecTV version. On the back, it's similar um, with the CCI port here that connects directly to the television in the same way as the other version. Um, it also has a debug port, which is similar. What's different about it is that instead of a USB port, it has this IR blaster port here. It's designed to work with this, uh, what's called an IR blaster cable that we ship with the product. It plugs in this way, and at the other end of the cable is actually an infrared transmitter with a piece of double-sided sticky tape. The way this works is you peel off the double-sided sticky tape and glue the infrared transmitter right to the front of the, the IR receiver window of the set-top box. Uh, from that point on, then, our interface can control the set-top box by sending it infrared commands uh, based on the patient uh, commands from the television. The other thing about this box that's different is that it has a power connection here. It's designed to work with the standard mini mod power module that would come with a, a, a standard mini mod rack. If you're using this as a standalone, not in the mini mod rack, we also offer a individual power supply that just plugs into the wall and then on this end plugs right into the product like so. Now the 295002 can be used uh, in, a, in the case where uh, it wants to, you want to uh, place it next to the television with the set-top box and if you're not using a, a head-end system and all the set-top boxes are next to the television, then this is a great way to um, not have to buy a mini-mod rack and, and do extensive cable runs. So the satellite interface is designed to work in all those various configurations. Thank you for joining me today. Please check back often for more tutorials about PDI products. 